Hey guys, going on Megan here. So here's the video I promised you guys. The famous monkey that was injected with phylostatin. Uh, it was a group of monkeys, by the way. But anyway, this is the control group, right? This is the leg muscle, by the way, guys. This is the quads. So this is the control group. And this is the leg gains of the monkey that was injected with a phylostatin virus, right? Check it out, right? And he reached that size in about 12 weeks. So in only three months, this monkey got jacked out of his fucking mind. It was only in one leg, though. They only injected in one leg to see the effects. Nonetheless, these are some impressive gains. This is way more muscle than we see when we inject animals with ridiculous levels of testosterone. Once again, just to show you how powerful phylostatin is. And keep in mind, the monkeys were not exercised. This was straight injection of phylostatin. No training, no steroids, nothing. But anyway, guys, this is another episode of Myostatin Monday where we talk about everything related to myostatin, which is the most important molecule when it comes to muscle growth. Yes, even more important than testosterone. And for those who don't know what myostatin does, let's do a quick recap. For those who know, you could just skip to the next chapter because this is going to be repetitive as shit for you. All right, so long story short, myostatin is a gene. It's a protein that your body makes. And its job is pretty much to limit how much muscle you could put on, right? If it wasn't for myostatin, we would all walk around like the fucking Hulk, right? So it does four main things. It stops protein synthesis. It increases protein breakdown. It lowers satellite cell activation, and it makes you insulin resistant, which obviously leads to less muscle, more fat. So pretty much it makes you skinny fat. Phylostatin, on the other hand, is another protein that your body makes, and it does the opposite of myostatin, right? It stops myostatin from activating its effects towards receptor. It also stops activating A. So this is the most anabolic molecule in the human body, phylostatin. Even more anabolic than testosterone. In fact, testosterone's effects are mainly mediated through phylostatin. Here are some examples of what happens when your myostatin levels are too high. For example, the reason why your legs shrink when you put them in a cast or you immobilize for a long time is because myostatin levels go up. The reason why HIV and cancer patients lose a ton of muscle so fast is also because the myostatin levels go up. And the reason why astronauts lose a ton of muscle mass in space is because, once again, when you go into space in a low gravity environment, myostatin also goes up right so myostatin is the bad guy if your goal is to maximize muscle growth here's an example of a rat at the bottom here this is the control rat this is a normal rat and this is the rat that was genetically engineered to overproduce phylostatin and to also lack the myostatin gene so as you can see that's the biggest rat we've seen in, in research four times the amount of muscle as a regular rat right so and once again normal levels of testosterone normal levels of androgens it is so massive, it's not even funny. And here's what the rat looks like when it's actually alive. Straight brawly, dwarfing the other rat. And this is lean muscle as well, extremely low levels of body fat. This is the monkey that was injected with phylostatin, which is what we're going to cover in today's video. As you can see here, this is before the injection. This is only a few weeks after the injection, about three months after the injection. Absurd amounts of muscle growth. And this is the 10-year-old kid who was lucky enough to be born with a myostatin deficiency. Once again, he has normal levels of testosterone, completely natty. But look at his physique at 10 years old, right? His parents were freaked out. They brought him to the doctor. And yeah, he's, he's healthy, perfectly healthy. Normal levels of androgens. Didn't even go through puberty yet. Yeah, he has more muscle than the average grown-ass man. Once again, this is what happens when you're lacking myostatin or you're overproducing phylostatin. And again, the reason why professional bodybuilders look so fucking huge is because one of the main effects of testosterone is to interfere with the myostatin pathway, mainly by upregulating phylostatin or increasing the activity of the IGF-1 pathway. Several studies also back this up. As you can see here, one of the most important transcription factors, in fact, the most important transcription factor for muscle growth is Acurin-1. You can see here the correlation is 0.999, which is, in short, the most important transcription factor for hypertrophy and sure enough myostatin blocks this gene so you want to put on gains you have to down regulate myostatin you have to lower myostatin another study shows the same thing the correlation with the amount of gains you put on after training and your ability to lower myostatin is negative 0.82 which is massive myostatin is also the reason why old women put on a lot less muscle than young men or old men after training mainly because they have a hard time lowering myostatin even when they train so as you can see here old men have a big drop in myostatin after training young men have the biggest drop in myostatin after training which is why again young men put on muscle so fast 
young women, decent drop, but old women struggle to lower myostatin, which is why they struggle to put on muscle mass. And several other studies confirm this, as you can see here. One of the main reasons why women cannot get as big as men, even if you inject them with testosterone, is because their myostatin activity is way too high. Myostatin is also responsible for insulin resistance. So if you have a dad bod, you're skinny fat, you have that tire around your belly, well, chances are you have very high levels of myostatin. Next, myostatin is also the reason why those who train with full body workouts or with high frequency tend to put on muscle so fast because the drop in myostatin after training only lasts for less than a day, right? The drop peaks at the eight hour mark and then slowly after that, myostatin goes back to baseline, right? It goes right back to fucking up your gains. So that's why those who train more frequently, such as full body workouts, nucleus overload, tend to put on muscle so fast, right? They're constantly keeping myostatin down regulated. Myostatin is also the reason why people who supplement with creatine tend to put on more muscle. It's not just the other effects of creatine, it's mainly that creatine also is a very, very powerful myostatin blocker. As you can see here, this is the drop in myostatin from the group that trained without creatine, and this is the drop in myostatin from the group that trained with creatine. Huge drop. And lastly, that's the reason why the World Anti-Doping Agency banned every single agent that drastically blocks myostatin or increases phylostatin. So if you want to lower myostatin, you're going to have to do it naturally, and I have a ton of videos on that. Just watch the playlist. All right, so back to the study. It's called Phylostatin Gene Delivery Enhances Muscle Growth and Strength in Non-Human Primates. I'm going to put the link in the description so you guys could check it out. But long story short, here's the result, right? There goes the control group. There goes the, you could skip the middle one, right? They injected it with a different, they were pretty much trying out two different kinds of the virus, and the middle one was trash. So let's focus on CMVFS. So as you can see, the timeline of gains from week zero all the way to week 20, the blue line is the control group, obviously no gains. The green line is once again the weaker version. So let's focus on the red line. As you can see, a 15 plus percent gain in muscle growth in only 12 weeks. So after the 12 week mark, you, as you notice, things started to kind of plateau. So in 12 weeks, in three months, this is how much muscle that monkey was able to build without training. You can't even see these results in that time span with DECA, Trend, Diana Ball, or any other steroids or even peptides that are out there. Now keep in mind, this is not realistic in real life, right? Because these monkeys were injected with a genetically engineered virus that makes your body overproduce phylostatin. You know, in fact, remember these guys, this study was not done for bodybuilding, right? These guys are trying to find remedies for people who are suffering with muscle wasting diseases, right? So, but as like in all things, eventually bodybuilders are going to get their hands on stuff like that, right? It's just like steroids, guys. Steroids were not invented for bodybuilders, right? They were invented for patients, burn patients, cancer patients. And then bodybuilders were like, wait a minute, you know, let me hop on that, right? So it's just a matter of time, right? Until eventually IFBB pros hop on stuff like that. If they're not already doing it, they're, already, they're probably doing it in the Middle East already or in Russia or some shit, right? Because these guys are the early adopters. But yeah, guys, gene therapy is the future. It's the future of bodybuilding. Uh, obviously not natural bodybuilding, all right? We're natty, so we obviously stand away from stuff like that. But as far as IFBB bodybuilding goes, gene therapy is the future, right? It's going to take over bodybuilding. It's going to take over the Olympics, right? Because think about it, right? If this monkey was able to put on that much muscle without the risks that come with steroid use, right? And they also checked his levels, right? The testosterone levels were normal, uh, no heart problems, nothing, right? So once bodybuilders realize that they're able to put on so much muscle, without the risks that come with testosterone use, right? No worries about liver toxicity, uh, not having to worry about balding, acne, gyno, none of that shit. They're going to hop on that like crazy. It's just a matter of time. Now, as far as us naturals, the best thing we could do is just lower myostatin and increase phylostatin through training. Because obviously, once these things become common, if you inject a phylostatin-producing virus in your body, you're no longer natty. That, that goes without saying. Oh, by the way, and there goes the table where they show you the testosterone levels. As you can see, testosterone levels were the same, right? So much muscle without even using the testosterone and androgen receptor pathway, which is insane. Which, once again, goes to show how powerful the myostatin phylostatin pathway is. But anyway, guys, didn't want to make this video too long. I promised I was going to cover this phylostatin monkey, and here it is. All right, see you guys in the comment section.
All right, guys, don't forget to like or share the video, subscribe and hit the bell, and buy my HSP Nucleus of a Low Training Program. It's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth. It includes full body workout splits, bro splits, push pull, home workouts, you name it. Also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book. You're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nucleus of Lord. Or you could just buy the shit at full price. All right, guys, I'm out of here.